All right, so I'm back, and today we are going to be doing the uh, second part of the Lord of the Rings movies, and today we're going to talk about the Desolation of Smog. And what I got here is the extended version. Um, if you're a fan of The Hobbit or Lord of the Rings, this is the version I recommend picking up. Um, and the main reason for it is because they add a little bit more to the movie, including a little bit more into the Mirkwood scene. Um, which by far was my least favorite part of this movie when it first came out in theaters was spoilers ahead. Just warning everybody, spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Um, but, uh, you know, when I read the book as a kid and watched the original animated movie, um... Mirkwood was a huge part uh, of the book. Um, that's, you know, where Bilbo names the uh, name Sting. Uh, and that's where Bilbo spends weeks, if I remember correctly, weeks wearing the ring. Um, and it just made no sense to cut so much out of this movie on that. Um, so backing up a little bit, um, the, the movie actually starts out with a, like, um, intro scene where Gandalf's meeting Thorin for the first time at the, uh, end of the Prince and Pony. And they start talking and Gandalf is the one that gives him the key and the map. And that gets, uh, Thorin started on his quest. Uh, which is, it, I liked that scene. I thought it was a great scene to add in there. Um, it wasn't necessary by any means, but, you know, again, this is showing where they came up with a great idea to extend the length of the movie without adding ridiculous things into it. Um, and, and it, it kind of is a necessary story, and it kind of also paints that picture of why Gandalf wants to get involved in this whole scenario to begin with. Um, and it, it was great. Um, other things that happen in this movie, they, they go to um, Bowen's house and he protects them, protects them from the um, Baron, Baron, I think? Baron? Uh, whatever. Um, and he protects them from the orcs that were chasing them from the uh, Misty Mountains. Um, eagles got him a little ahead, but the orcs kept coming, so... Um, and then, uh, with the extended version, um, in, in the unextended version, they just kind of meet briefly, and then next thing you know, he's serving everybody dinner. In the extended version, you get this... <laughs> it's actually a pretty funny scene of, of him talking to Gandalf and Bilbo, and... Gandalf says, oh, there's just a few in our party. And he's like, well, there's only two. You call that a few? Is there more? And then and then, as as the story kept going, there was more and more and more dwarves popping out of his house, and he just kind of get more and more irritated. <laughs> it was pretty hilarious. Um, you know, scenes like that were, were good. Um, then, then they get into Mirkwood, and Gandalf rides off by himself. Um... Which happened in the book, but we never knew what Gandalf was doing in the book. Um, now we know that he meets up with Rad Radagast the Brown, and he's investigating the tombs of the uh, the Nazgul, which was awesome. I mean, it, I mean, yeah, there was no action, but uh, you see Gandalf investigating it and realize that yes, they have broken out, and it was just like such a great scene to lead into the Lord of the Rings. Um, it, it, was, it was cool. I really enjoyed that. Then there's Mirkwood. Which, you know, if you blink at the wrong time, you miss Mirkwood. Um, yeah, they get lost in the woods. And then they get attacked by spiders. In the extended version, they add another, like, five, maybe ten minutes onto that. Um, you know, them trying to cross a lake, and they're lost a little bit longer. So I, I like that a lot better. Um, but it really, this movie really should have been, almost the first half of this movie should have been them 
lost in Mirkwood and then captured by the elves. But instead they added more to Lake Town, which was irritating. Um, and then, of course, you know, the dwarves get captured by the elves. Bilbo gets them out. And then now, instead of them just riding in the barrels to Lake Town, there's this huge ac- action sequence, um, which... <sighs> You know, it didn't happen in the book, but at the same time, I'm okay with it because they actually did it in a way that was, it was fun, it was entertaining, and, you know, it kind of kept you at the edge of your seat. Even though, you know, knowing the books, I knew everyone was going to make it. Um, And it was like, this is kind of fun, this is kind of interesting. You know, seeing the dwarves trying to defend themselves in the barrels, riding down the rapids with orcs trying to kill them. Uh, and then elves trying to stop them and elves versus orcs while dwarves are in the middle in barrels in the rapids. It was it was just like total complete chaos and it was awesome. Um, so, I mean, yes, it wasn't really in the book, but I forgive it because of the fact that it was still fun to watch. Uh, and it doesn't take away from the story. Um, so, so, yeah, that was good. Uh, you do, we do get a little bit of a love story in between an elf and one of the dwarves, which uh, during this movie, fucking hated, absolutely hated that. That was absolutely just ridiculous because that never happened in the book, and it just yeah I know I'm, I keep going back to it didn't happen in the book, but really it is so just. I mean, it's just irritating. I mean, they shoehorn this love story in there. This dwarf should have been, you know, nowhere near wanting to to, to fall in love with, especially with a captor. Um, you know, he's foc- he should be focused on the giant dragon he's about to go fight. Um, but instead, you know, there's the whole love story thing. And it just, it wasn't, it wasn't what I wanted. Um... We didn't get introduced to, I believe his name is Bolg, Bolg, uh, who is, uh, as it turns out, we find out in the third movie, is Azhog's son, and he's another big, mean orc, and he's leading these orc parties after the dwarves, uh, which is cool. Um, Then you get... uh, so in the book, um, the dwarves wash up the, on the shore of Lake Town, and then they're greeted as heroes. In the movie, they wash up before Lake Town, uh, not knowing how to cross the river, um, and then they meet Bard, uh, who assists them to smuggle them into the town. Now again, that was a different take on the movie. Uh, than the books, but I'm okay with it because, you know, they're, they are trying to be a little sneaky, as, as sneaky as they could. So, yeah, they would they would try and sneak into town. Um, they wouldn't just waltz right in, um, you know, especially since, you know, there's one or two things that are going to happen if these dwarves go to the mountain. Either they're going to kill the dragon and everybody's going to be rich and, er, you know, good times were had by all, or more likely the 13 or... 13 dwarves and one hobbit are going to wake the dragon up and he's just going to incinerate everybody. I mean, honestly, you gotta, as a human, you have to put that in perspective. It's like, okay, do you really think 14 little men are going to kill this dragon when an entire army couldn't stop it when it first attacked? Um, no. So, it, like I said, it kind of made more sense that they would sneak in. So I'm okay with that. But then they spend so much time in Lake Town that I'm just sitting there like, I am bored to tears. Yeah, there's some politics in there, but it's that stupid politics. Just kind of like, you know, the boss of the town, he's just trying to be the boss of the town. And he doesn't like the, the underling bard who's more of the people's person. And it just was just one of those like, come on. Let's let's move this along, um, and, and honestly, it's like if they would have cut Lake Town in half, uh, that's about how much time it needed, 
and they could have taken that time and added it to Mirkwood, which would give it closer to what that needed. Because that mo that scene was just was so quick and brief that it was just it was unsatisfying to me. I, I keep going back to that, but um, and then the dwarves, you know, they get captured and then or they get found out, and then then they strike a deal with the people that you know they're going to share all the riches, and and then this sneaky little master of town master of lake town decides okay you know what go ahead you know we'll arm you up and send you on your way so he does and they're gone um but feely i think it is uh he was hit by a arrow which this part doesn't make sense either because they say it was a morgul shaft and it's like okay last i checked morgul blades were carried by the nazgul in the first hobbit movie even you know, they see one knife that was a Morgul blade, and they're like, okay, that is the Witch King's knife. Um, and in The Lord of the Rings, you only, the entire Lord of the Rings movies, you only come across one Morgul blade, and that was the Witch King's knife. Um, and now some random orc archer has Morgul shafts. Uh, no... So apparently he's got a Morgul shaft in him, and that poisoned him, so he couldn't go on the quest. Again, the fuck. Um, see, this is where the movie, you know, they start taking a little bit more liberties in the movie that start kind of like, Ugh. um. So Keeley gets stuck behind. His brother stays behind. One of the other dwarfs slept in, so he stays behind. And the um, dwarf... I can't remember his name, but uh, the medic dwarf, I guess. He he says his his place is there with the wounded, so he stays behind. So four of, four of the 13 stay behind. So there's only nine, or I guess there's a 10 going there, because 10 with Bilbo. And, yeah, it, it, that's not how it happened. And I know I keep going back to that, but, you know, I'm okay with certain changes, in the story, like them being smuggled in, the barrel fight, you know, the whole entrance part of this movie where Thorin's sitting there with Gandalf, because it doesn't change the dynamic of the story. By leaving four of the dwarves behind so that they can, one of them can be sick and then get sell, saved by the elf so that they can then continue on their quest. Uh, and, and have this huge fight with orcs in the middle of Lake Town it changes the story and you just sit there scratching your head like what? Um, or at least I don't think there was dwarves left behind I'm pretty sure there weren't uh, correct me if I'm wrong I haven't read the books in a while um, I'll have to reread those soon but anyway um, so it, I, I think it detract from the story because we're trying to focus on the shoehorn romance uh, and it's like a love triangle Legolas, this elf chick and Feely and it just it, it didn't work for me in this movie at all now you know then we get into the orcs attacking and everybody's fighting the orcs and they all get killed real easily these are supposed to be super orcs you know th these are Eurocs and they're just getting butchered by two elves I mean they just took out a whole garrison of elves on their way here and these two elves are kicking their ass. <laughs> you know, whatever. I, I won't focus on that because that happens all the time. The orcs kind of get the short end of the stick. But then again, orcs don't have as much training as elves do. Anyway. Um, but then we do get a cool fight scene in between Balg. I, th I think it's Balg. Um, and Legolas where they just... I mean, they just duke it out and... Um, Ball comes up on top for the most part, and Legolas is over there bleeding. He's like, "What the fuck is this?" And it, it, it was cool because usually Legolas is just like, "Okay, you know, you're dead." You don't see him get in a fight with something and not kill it ever, <laughs> let alone get kind of his ass beat. And then Ball takes off and goes back with the uh, the rest of the orcs, and then they run back to. Uh, uh, the little fortress at the uh, south end of Mirkwood. 
uh, where the necromancer is. This is where Gandalf comes in and he tells Radagast, get out of here, go get help. Uh, and he goes in there and, um, you know, he's kind of fighting orcs and stuff like that. In the theatrical version, he's fighting orcs and he makes his way through and then eventually he gets one-on-one -on -one with the necromancer who turns out to be Sauron. The Sauron. And it kicks the crap out of him and puts him in a little cage. Um, in this version, he actually finds Thorne's father and he's able to cure him of his madness temporarily and and you come to find out that he had one of the seven dwarf rings and Azhog took it from him, like cut his finger off and took it. And now we know that Sauron has at least one of the seven dwarf rings. In the Lord of the Rings books, they don't really mention it very much in the movies, but in the Lord of the Rings books, they say that the um, seven dwarf rings have been claimed by Sauron. Um, but this is the first time we actually know for sure that he has at least one. Um, probably probably more, if not all, but he has at least one. Um, which was really, 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 really cool. I really like that. And, and then you get the dwarves entering the mountain. Um, you know, they, it kind of goes back and forth. Like, are they going to get in there? Do they get in there? And all that stuff. Which is what happened in the book. Um, you know, they almost gave up. And then Bilbo figures it out at the last minute. So Bilbo gets in there. Um, and they send Bilbo to go try and steal the Arkenstone. Now, this is again where Jackson or whoever was actually directing this movie... Uh, made a good decision to explain the um, Arkenstone, like the importance. Yes, it's it, it it's the king's jewel, uh, heart of the mountain, and stuff like that. But all the dwarves sworn allegiance to the Arkenstone, and this is where you find out that the dwarves weren't really planning on going in there and killing the dragon, but stealing the Arkenstone real quick, and then rallying all the dwarves to the Arkenstone. And then once they do that, then we've got. Uh, then you got an army of dwarves prepared for battle that might be able to actually take on Smog. Uh, so it makes sense. You know, they send Bilbo... Like, in the book, I believe, they send Bilbo in just to steal whatever he could steal. Um, just to prove that he was there. Um, it didn't make the most sense, but now it makes more sense. So, Bilbo goes in there, and of course he wakes up Smog. And... You get this great interchange in between these two. They're kind of going back and forth, just like in the book. Um, and I really, really enjoyed that. Uh, both uh, uh, Cumberbatch and, uh, well, whoever plays Bilbo. They just have such a good chemistry. Um, and you see that in the Sherlock show as well, because they're one's Sherlock and one's Watson. Um, but they just go back and forth, and it's just it's just a lot of fun. But you also get the, uh, you know, w with that in interchange or in er, exchange between these two characters, um, you get this really awesome scene where one smog, he knows the Arkenstone. He knows where it's at. He knows what it does to people. And he even says, he's like, I'm almost tempted to let you take it so that it can drive him mad. And, you know, that's why Bilbo hesitates, um, He'll hesitate to give it to Thorin in the next movie, um, and that that's, that that was great. And he also says he's like, I I could sense something else on you. Uh, you have something gold that's precious, and because he he knew what that ring was, he knew that ring of power. He could sense it. You know, he knows Sauron's getting ready to to relaunch his attack on the world, and he's probably on board with that because they'll probably give him all the gold. Uh, or whatever he wants. I mean, he's a dragon. Um, you know, if drag, if Smog was lead, helping lead the armies of uh, Sauron, I think we would have a different outcome. And that's one thing that they really painted in into this movie. Um, like, what was at stake? Uh, why, why Gandalf wanted to set these pieces into motion? And it was a great interchange. I, or a great exchange. I really liked it. It was a lot of fun. Bilbo books it. He's like, I got to get the fuck out of Dodge. And then 
They ruined it. That's the best I could say. They ruined that whole exchange because then the dwarves charge in there and they try to fight the dragon and uh, you know they're cha he's they're being chased by him and they're leading him all over the for the old forges and nothing's working out for him. Um, and then eventually they they try to drown him in liquid gold which of course doesn't work and he just pisses him off and he takes off and starts flying towards Lake Town like okay I'm dead you're gonna see you're gonna see what I'm really capable of now uh, because he's pissed off and, and it's like okay I can see that I can understand that but one of the big dynamics of of that scene in the book was the fact that Bilbo, who was the cowardly type um, from the start of the movie, he's the only one that has the balls to walk into Smog's lair by himself because he has the ring and he knows how much he knows that he can get away if he uses the ring. Um, and and you know everyone else thinks that he's being courageous, but in truth, he's just being sneaky with the ring. But the dwarves are all cowardly and they all hide and they hide while. Smog is burning the city down. And it made no sense why they would charge into battle. They know they're outnumbered. They know they're not going to win this fight. Um, I mean, the whole thing that they've been building up this entire movie and the previous movie was that they need to get the Arkenstone to get the dwarf army and have the dwarf army fight the dragon. That's what they needed to do. And they just did not do that at the last minute. It just, I mean, I was just sitting there like, what the fuck am I watching? And, you know, some people enjoyed that scene. I did not. I it really, I think it really kind of killed the momentum of the movie for me. And I much would have preferred the original version of this scene where Bilbo has this exchange with the dragon. Um, he steals something. Smog realizes that he stole something. He's pissed off. He goes outside. He starts burning down the side of the mountain, trying to get the dwarves. Dwar you know, dwarves are hiding. He doesn't know what to do, and because he, he he thinks that it might just be one guy, one sneaky guy, and he thinks that it's somebody from Lake Town because Bilbo says he's the barrel rider, and he's like, oh, he's one of those people. So Smog then would fly down and attack the city. You know, it, it was like one of those, you know, you got this band of heroic dwarves, but when when they really get to that last umph, they fail. And that was such a great dynamic uh, in the book. And in the movie, they just, they lost it um, because of that scene. Uh, I, I just was not a fan of that. And... Yeah, like I said, some people are, some people aren't. I'm not one of those people that enjoyed that. It just, I don't know. It, it, it was just like, you really are going to fumble this ball at the last last bit. Um, so, so the movie was good, it, but it wasn't as good as it could have been. Uh, and I think, yes, I, I think uh, the way they did it, there is really hardly any way to make this into two movies um, but certain things that they did at the last minute because uh, apparently the uh, the opening scene of this movie was made at the last minute and so was the ending scene and the opening scene I, like I said I, I like that but the whole ending scene again they could have taken that whole section of dwarves versus smog and put that into Mirkwood where it really needed to be because Mirkwood was such an important part um, and even in the movie like he, Bilbo climbs up to the top of the tree and he you know the dwarves are all like losing it down there and he climbs up to the tree on his own accord and says oh we're almost there I can see where you know where we have to go in the book he climbs up to the top of the tree but it was it was in a bowl so from his perspective the forest just kept going on forever and he goes down there and tells them and that's what decide that's what makes the dwarves decide okay we're going to leave the path because we see some elves over there and we're going to go try and um, 
and see if they can help us. And they, every time they get close to the elves, the elves would blink out of existence and move to another location. And they'd keep following them, following them, following them. And then eventually they they wander too far and then they couldn't get back. And then that's when the spiders started attacking. I thought that was much more, much more needed in this movie. The... I mean, I don't know if any of you guys have ever been lost in the woods. I have been lost in the woods once or twice. Uh, you know, I live in Colorado. There's woods everywhere. Uh, but I've been lost in the woods before. And, and and these are regular woods. They're not magical. And, you know, after after a couple hours, you're sitting there kind of like, you know, you, you're kind of feeling a little claustrophobic and things are closing in and you're not thinking straight. You're... You kind of start panicking. You think, okay, maybe I can move faster instead of moving smarter. Um, then you're going around in circles, and I mean, it's real easy to get disoriented. And then you know you can't see the sun, so you can't get your uh, you know directions right. And you know it, it's you know it could get terrifying. And like I said, that's without magic. So imagine how cool it would have been if they really were lost for so long in this movie. I, I think that's something that really needed to happen. And they could have still ended it with um, Smog flying out and headed towards the mountain. Just the same way they ended it in this one. Just not have that action sequence. They don't need to have big action sequence at the end of a movie. Um, I mean, the first movie didn't have the biggest action sequence at the end. I mean, they were being chased by the war group, the log riders. Um, yeah, right after Goblin Town, but it just, I don't know, it, it just, it, it bugged me. So all in all, uh, Desolation of Smog, uh, theatrical version, I'm going to give a 6 out of 10. Uh, it, it's still a good movie, um, still enjoyable, uh, by far the weakest of the Hobbit trilogy. And the extended version, uh, I'll bump it up to a 7 out of 10. Because it does add a little bit more to the Mirkwood scene. Uh, adds more to the story that evolves into the Lord of the Rings. Um, and just all around, it, it's a better version of the movie. So if you're going to watch it, I do recommend getting that version. Uh, if you don't have the patience for you know all the ad added stuff to it, uh, that... Why the hell are you watching Lord of the Rings? Because <laughs> this is a long series. Um, but yeah, it, for me it was really weak. It just wasn't as much fun as it could have been.